Ladies and gentlemen, actually 100% gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On this episode, the engine reveal of the blasphemy build. It's here. Well, after months and months of research and planning, my engine has finally arrived. It's a very exciting day here at the offices of Wrench. And it's important you guys know what the plan was originally for this car. First of all, there's a reason it's called the Blasphemy Build. Second of all, I had a couple of things in mind when I decided to start with this bare shell. And keep in mind, for all of you purists out there, this was nothing but a bare shell. This was a facsimile of its former self. And frankly, I saved it from the junkyard. So just know that now. But two things I really had in mind. Number one, I wanted 400 horsepower. Number two, I don't know why. I just I thought that was a good number. I also wanted it to be super reliable and modern and able to tune with my iPhone. So those two goals were always in the back of my head. And what I settled on was an engine that I don't really think is a compromise, but a huge step forward. And it's also the reason why this is called the Blasphemy Build. So for more information, let's shoot over to the whiteboard. This is my first whiteboard exercise for the channel. And I discovered I don't actually have a whiteboard, but this is a nice piece of paper that I can use in lieu of one. What we have here on the left-hand side, and if it's hard to read, don't worry, I will go over everything. This is a stock 1979, Porsche 911 SC motor configuration. Some of the numbers might be a little off, but this is as close as I could get with doing some preliminary research. And I'm gonna compare these numbers to the numbers of the new motor. And this really, if you are a Porsche purist, I hope you will open your mind to what this could potentially become. So let's start from the top. Displacement. SC 3.0, 2994, essentially a three liter motor. This is 2999cc, also a three liter motor. Okay, configuration, flat six boxer engine. Also, flat six, six boxer engine. This one's air cooled. This one is water cooled valve train single overhead cam this has a four valve quad camshaft configuration or a dual overhead cam so that motor can breathe a little easier cylinder heads aluminum cylinder heads aluminum the bore on this motor is uh 95 millimeters apparently on the sc on this bad boy, it is uh, 89.2. Stroke is 74. Stroke for me is 80 mil. Compression 9.3 to 1. That's the Euro spec SC motor. This one has 10.7 uh, 10 to 1. Injection, this is a big one. Uh, CIS. Mechanical injection or, of course, carburetors, if you will. Um, this is not that at all. This is drive-by wire. This is uh, EFI with drive-by wire. The cam is a fixed cam on an SC motor, and this is really where things are amazing. This bad boy is very comparable to Honda's iVTEC. So variable can shaft, variable lift, variable timing, cam power. The SC motor, 180 horsepower. This mystery engine, 240 horsepower out of the gates. And finally, and this is the linchpin, the cost. The cost of all of this technology that's now 40 years old and 180 horsepower 
is right around $15,000 for the motor. And if you need a rebuild, which many do because they're tired because they're 40 years old, $15,000 for a rebuild. Now, I looked on Craigslist, I looked on Pelican, I looked on eBay, I called shops. That's, those are general averages for how much these engines cost. I know you've probably seen one on a pallet for eight grand and you could put it in your car and it would work great. But in general, I sold mine a couple of years ago uh, before it really went nuts for 12 grand. So just know that these engines are right around, let's say 12 to $15,000 and rebuilds are 10 to who knows how much you wanna spend on it. Cost of this mystery 3.0 engine which is essentially an upgrade across the board. $1,100. Let's go meet it. Stop. I totally forgot to tell you something that's critical about this blasphemous engine. It was co-designed by Porsche. If you crack this engine open, it's German part numbers. True story. So, it's not as blasphemous as I stated. Think of it like an SC motor with VTEC. That's the best way to think of this particular engine and obviously years and years and years newer. We now resume our regularly scheduled engine breakdown. This is the Subaru EZ30, otherwise known as the EZ30R by enthusiasts. It's the second generation EZ30. It's a water-cooled flat six engine that was featured in the 2004 to 2009 Subaru Outback, Legacy, and Liberty. Compared to the first generation EZ30, the EZ30R was revised to add the Subaru Active Valve lift system to the intake cam, providing both variable valve timing and lift for the intake valves, which resulted in increased power, torque, and economy. It's essentially Subaru's answer to Honda's IV tech. The cylinder heads for the EZ30R were also revised to include three exhaust ports per head instead of the single exhaust port used in the original EZ30 MK1, which gathered the exhaust from each cylinder bank into a single port. According to the interwebs, this is what Porsche's role in the development of this engine was. Other detail improvements included new block casting and a reduction in overall weight by almost 20 pounds, achieved through the use of hollow journal camshafts, reducing the number of bolts in the timing chain cover, and there were a million of them, and switching to a plastic intake manifold. 400 horsepower, which is my goal, is right on the edge of what this engine will take, but with a flex fuel setup and E85 for gas, I should be relatively safe. One of the great things about this engine is how much aftermarket support there is for it. There are so many Subaru aftermarket companies that make cool stuff for this engine. So this is the part where I thank you for being here and hope that you will like and subscribe to the channel and probably in this particular video, I'm gonna to have to say goodbye to a few Porsche purists. And I'm sorry to see you go. I realize that this is blasphemy for you, but I will welcome the new Subaru contingent that is here trying to see how I can get that engine into that car. So here's the deal. I don't know all about Subarus. I don't know anything about engine swaps. I don't know anything about how to make a turbo. So all of this is brand new and I'm hoping you will be along for the ride with me because it's a cool adventure and I'm just a regular dude in a regular garage trying to make a cool car. Here's what I'm really excited about. The engine's here, the car is here. I have never seen the engine even mocked up in the car. So why don't we start with that? I'm gonna jack the back of the car up, slide the engine underneath and just see how it looks.
It certainly has to be moved around, but there is plenty of room for activities. Good spots for turbos and things. I do want to take a measurement and see how close we are to the front of the car. And then I might see if I can get the transmission at the very least to lay on the floor over there and see how much space I have to uh, work with. See how far forward I can get this entire contraption to again improve the weight balance. You can see that all of this has been cut out up here. So I do have some opportunity. So this episode is really about the reveal of the motor more than anything else. The other thing I forgot to mention though is the weight. The Porsche 911 SC motor is 462 pounds. This Subaru EZ30 flat six is 397 pounds. So I take a 65 pound weight reduction at the back of the car. Now I will be adding a bit of that back with the turbos and the piping and that kind of thing, but I should see at least a 30 pound reduction in the very back or what we might call the polar moment of the car. And I think I might even be able to shift the transaxle a little bit forward to again, improve the weight balance. Speaking of the transaxle, I don't have the adapter plate between the EZ30 and my Porsche 996 six speed cable shift transmission. I'm waiting for that right now, but I'm waiting to find out how deep it is. If I can find out how deep it is, I can make something up. I can fabricate something that will mimic how thick the adapter plate is. So I can put the Porsche transmission and the Subaru together, put them into one unit so I can figure out how to start moving it around and make the engine mounts. I have no idea how I'm gonna make the engine mounts. So that should be a really cool next episode. Anyway, a really, really exciting day here at the Wrench Lab. I finally have the heart to my transplant. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you'll hang with me for this entire blasphemy build. Even if it's just to watch a guy who has no idea what he's doing, try to do something really cool. And that reminds me, at any step of the way, if you guys know more than I do about a thing, please feel free to comment. I'm very open to learning and that's why I'm doing this entire process so publicly. So thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out. Make sure you please hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.